Well, it happened. The robots have finally taken over. And as you know by now, ChatGPT is all the rage in 2023. See, ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence chatbot developed by OpenAI, and it was officially launched in November of 2022. It is built upon OpenAI's GPT-3 family, which consists of large language models. And it has been fine-tuned since the inception to use both supervised and reinforcement learning techniques to provide users with accurate responses, well, somewhat accurate responses, that are essentially, because all, after all, all humans are providing the data that is training the AI of the future with every query. So it's an exciting time to be alive. And uh, in this video, we'll walk through some of the most interesting alternatives to use when ChatGPT goes down, which it happens quite frequently. Um, and I will cover some of the reasons to keep an open mind, your mind, your human mind, on the alternatives uh, for, for better results and responses and from your queries. So stick around on this one. This one is going to be epic. Let's get into it. Now, you may be wondering, how accurate is ChatGPT? Well, it honestly depends on how accurate your input is or your query is. If you provide it with inaccurate knowledge, it may provide you with inaccurate knowledge. Um, so I think it's smart to use keywords, not talk to it, you know, like a one-to-one -one conversation with a human being, but omit some of the words that, what I'd call, um, certain stop words and use more keywords and um, provide it with more context. So on the topic of how legal is this? Well, that depends. Um, see, you may use it for writing a blog post or writing a song or song lyrics, but you may not be getting 100% unique uh, responses there. You may find that that same blog post may be elsewhere. Is this something I should be using for, let's say, legal documents? And I did use it. The other day, a friend of mine suggested that I take a legal document and the whole thing and copy it and paste it and put it into ChatGPT and then ask questions about what legalities are consequential to me if I sign or perhaps refuse to sign this particular legal document. And shockingly, it provided me with factual information that I could have hired a lawyer for to answer and represent me. But this was very great for a business document to, to, ba to basically understand and interpret the business dealings and understand some of the legal jargon that I was unfamiliar with. This was a very powerful tool for that. Could ChatGPT help me at school or at work or at home with my family? And the answer is yes. It could be excellent for asking questions about a family concern or a family matter or what to do when your seven or eight year old or nine year old uh, does something. How do you respond as a parent? When it comes to schools and learning institutions, educational institutions, some schools have banned it. They've gone as far as banning chat GPT because they feel that their students are cheating. And then there's other institutions who have embraced it fully and their college programs about why AI is so powerful and why we should embrace it. There are thousands of use cases in all modern industries today. In fact, I use it for audio engineering and I ask it what compression settings are best used for a certain style of two bus compression. And you may ask it questions about cooking or a particular family concern or really anything that you can think of. And so it's designed for everyone. Everyone's inclusive in this. It's exciting to use this in a way that is beyond just programmers and the nerdy and the technology talk that we all fear sometimes. So I think this is incredible for all use cases in all industries. And I would recommend you and others embrace it to your full extent. Okay, so the first uh, AI alternative that we're going to take a look at is u.com. And u.com is an AI tool that is based on a combination of search engines like Google, but can also generate text like ChatGPT. You will feel right at home with u.com because it feels like the SERPs or the search engine results pages 
from Google.com. So with you.com, it's a search that helps you with almost everything that Google and ChatGPT does for you, but it also provides other tools. And it provides things like AI that can answer general questions and explain certain things in detail, suggest ideas. It can translate, it can summarize text, it can compose emails, and it can write code for you. And it's powered by artificial intelligence and natural language processing, allowing human-like conversations. It is a constant constantly learning from vast amounts of information on the internet. So unlike ChatGPT, which gets a sample or the model data uh, occasionally, which at the current version, that's how it operates. Eventually, it'll be more real time and it will be more frequently updated. But for now, it's it's sort of set back in a, a year or so ago, I think it was, uh, depending on what version, what models you're using. So let's have a look at you.com. We'll do some simple queries and uh, walk through the other examples. Okay, so for this example, I have you.com open. Let's just ask it, what is the distance to the sun? Okay, so it provided me with this information, but it also provided me with a lot more context. So it gave me a link, which was really cool. And ChatGPT will just probably give me the text. Um, the other cool thing here is that it gave me alternative searches here over on the right, or other results rather, and that I could use to further my research. I can edit here, I can share, I can thumbs up or thumbs down providing feedback, and I can click on these links and go to that. As I mentioned before, it, it seems very much like a uh, Google search engine. So that's the power here with you.com. Now let's ask it to write uh, a simple hello world app in JavaScript. Write a... Hello world app in JavaScript. Okay, so here we go. Here's an example of a basic hello world written in JavaScript. Now that's pretty amazing because that's exactly what we expect from ChatGPT and the alternative should be providing the same sort of thing. So this could help you if you don't remember it, you don't wanna Google it, you don't wanna to go to say something like Stack Overflow or something, this would help you greatly. And not only that, you, can, you have context. So you asked it what the sun is, the distance between uh, Earth and Sun, uh, and it gives you that. And now you're switching your query and you're getting code. But let's just say that maybe this was all related. And I wanted to do some calculations on the information that I received from the average uh, distance between the Sun and Earth. And then I wanted to do some other calculations in code. You could have all of that in context. And I believe you could probably save this search. You can enable your location. And yes, you have history. So if I go back to history, it has history similar to ChatGPT, and it looks like you can just continue on. So this is a great alternative. I am not going to get into all the other details of what you can do with you.com, but I highly recommend you check it out. And just as a, as a side note here, none of this is sponsored by any of these affiliations or any of these companies. Uh, this is just purely my uh, willingness to provide more information, more context around some of the alternative tools in AI that I've been using and I wanted to share them with you. So just wanted to put that out there. Let's move on to the next example. Okay, so now we're at perplexity.ai. And perplexity.ai provides the references of the websites from which it is composing its answers and not artificially generating it like, say, ChatGPT. And I find it incredibly useful because it has the ability to ask follow-up questions, which is a huge advantage that makes Perplexity AI one of my favorites. You know, it's a really good competitor to, say, something like Google. You can also use text to SQL, which is another feature of Perplexity.ai that I'd love to talk more about in another video. So now we're going to go ahead and ask it the same thing. So what is the distance to the sun? Okay, so we're getting our results. It's a little slower, I noticed, but it provides quite a bit of information. So it provides sources, which is an interesting one, and it kind of highlights. So maybe you could drill down and say, like, NASA is probably uh, a very... Um, truthful, authoritative source that I could use my re, uh, in my research. And it gives you the, the summary of and the answer of, uh, of, of the distance between the sun, which looks similar to the other one. I mean, it's basically saying it's 93 million miles away. Um, okay, and then we can ask a follow-up question. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try to stick to the same plan. So now I'm going to ask it to write me a uh, hello world app in JavaScript. And let's just see what will happen here. Because it's not a follow-up question, 
But there you go. It and what I really like about this is it gives you the copy and paste features, so you can. It looks like they wrote it slightly different. They used an alert instead of I think before it was another document write to write to the DOM. Um, but similar here, they have you know feedback concepts that not only help the company but also help you train it and help you kind of drill down what is accurate and what isn't. Um, and then it also per, it also gives you uh, some related links that you can click on um, to help you kind of understand uh, to, to drill down in your research a little more. So very exciting stuff here. This one I did not have to log into. I can still share. I can copy this and I can create some historical threads with perplexity.ai. This one's very powerful. I highly recommend you check this one out as well. And that's about all I'm going to do for this test here. We're going to try to keep these tests minimal and just kind of, you know, sprinkle it over your mind so you can try other things when ChatGPT goes down or when it's not available and or if you don't want to pay for it or if you just want to use a consensus mindset through your AI research. Great. Now let's take a look at the next example. All right. And next up we have FIND, which I hope I am pronouncing correctly. FIND. The AI search engine for developers. Yeah, that's really great. I love this. The, the cool thing about Find here is uh, you can search for code snippets as a developer. You could search for a specific thing, similar to maybe uh, GitHub search or Stack Overflow search. And I think that's really exciting. Even in the, the actual examples here, it says, when should I use Next.js or Vue? which is very cool. But if you also notice, it has other things like US politics. And, you know, so that's quite exciting too. For this example, okay, well, before I get into the example, I also want to highlight there is a light and dark mode, which is always fun. There is a new thread button. There are clear threads. There's a custom search and a detailed enabled. And I don't really know what detailed enabled is. I imagine it gives you more verbose answers. But for this example... Like all the examples we've tested so far in this video, we're just going to ask it, what is the distance, uh, well, I should spell this right, distance to the sun? Well, I won't spell it correctly. Let's see what happens. What is the distance to the sun? Well, the web answer provides the 93 million miles away, which is very great. It's very verbose here. It's giving us a lot of detail. There's something also interesting about this search engine results page is that it's giving us these underlying links. And if I hover over them, it gives me more knowledge and their source. So it looks like it aggregates the sources from a combination of different sources into one result. So it sort of cuts your search down considerably. I love it. I think it's great. You can regenerate your answers and you can also ask follow-up questions. And so you can drill down and, ooh, was this answer better than Google? Well, I'll say yes. What can we do better? I love it. I love that they're asking for more feedback. It's a very good thing to do. Okay, and so the next thing we're going to do is we can ask a follow-up question, and that is going to be write me a hello world app in JavaScript. I'm going to use this auto-completed result here and just click yes. Ooh, so it provides syntax highlighting a little bit better than the others did. And this is very similar. So it's saying use an alert or a console log. Okay, I like that it gave us different examples. You could write a function or you could just write an alert. And they give us document write, document log. And then it even gives you recommendations to use this in a better way. Maybe the more modern approach, maybe uh, something of that nature. So this is very exciting. And that's pretty much it. I'm not going to get into too much more here. I just want to, again, sprinkle in some of this uh, information to you and have you go explore your own way. And then hopefully you'll leave some comments, ask some questions, interact with me and others in the community, and then find some cool new tools that are using AI, machine learning, natural language processing, and all the fun stuff that we're doing in the world today. If you like videos like this, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, and all of that fun stuff. And as always, please remember that this is all an experiment. I have been Eric. You have been amazing, and until next time, bye-bye. Okay, I can stop being a robot now, I think. Yeah, I can stop. I better go outside.
Bye. I don't wanna see-